Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Wednesday, the 1st of April. All right, pinch in a punch for the first day of the month. Hey, maybe this is all one big joke. But uh, just looking at the, um, the news, you're going to start to think it's a bit of a joke. Because what you're going to get is reiteration from the news services as long as this drags out. It's like the China-US trade issue, right? That is replay, replay until, you, until you're a bit brain dead. Um, Trump's coming out saying uh, a bit of the obvious the next two, two the next two weeks will be, you know, potentially the peak of the coronavirus. Um, dollar weakens as the Fed way measures the, well, the market measures the, uh, you know, the Fed outlook. Uh, talk about, you know, they'll do whatever it takes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, everyone's rolling out the print, printing press and uh, just keeping all their economies going, which is, you know, they're kicking the tin down the road, which is going to be a, a nuisance down the track. Now, just looking at the, the analysis, right, we've got some nice short-term trending markets. Now, don't forget, we've got the non-farm payrolls coming up this Friday. I expect the numbers to be exceptionally crap, right? And we get a huge surge of dollar weakness. And from that point on, I think we start to see dollar strength through the market as the rest of the country's data starts to roll out. So what we're seeing at the moment is on the charts, I think it's a little bit early to be jumping in just yet. So have a look at Aussie Kiwi. Euro and, and pretty much sterling as well. These currency pairs are trading as in unison. This is ex exceptionally good trading uh, conditions when the US dollar is reacting the same against all pairs. So to me, uh, we've got pretty good conditions, but, but it's, the timing isn't right just yet, okay? To start to get in and start selling these currencies and buying dollars isn't the right time ahead of the non-farm payrolls. We've got another couple of days to go uh, it doesn't mean it, it can't fall, but if you want clear and precise direction, you want to be waiting for those numbers. So to me, the currencies have run their course and they seem to be, seem to be running out of steam here. Uh, I'd say by the, by the North American session today, we'll start to see if the dollar does come back or not. But uh, all the currencies are just sitting around. Traders are trying to work out whether these things go up or down. Now, dollar CAD, to me, is the... Uh, is the odd one out at the moment, right? So you've got the, the well, there's the dollar situation we're, we're dealing with here. Then you're also dealing with oil at 20 bucks. Okay, it might be a little bit hard to see there, but the, the green bars are oil. Now that's that's falling. I've got that uh, scale over here inverted. Uh, that's falling and dollar cad's going the other way. Now that is, something's got to give there, right? So to me, you, you've got, well, in all, um, I was going to say in hindsight, but to me, dollar CAD's got to come back to where oil is. Uh, it should override that uh, bit of dollar weakness in the market. As I said, you wait for the non-farm payrolls to come out or, or all the big negative US numbers, right? Then it's all positive from that point on, especially when you start to see all the numbers coming out of Europe, UK, Australia, New Zealand, um, Japan, Canada, all weak, then you're going to see these currencies turn around. So I think the, the big potential right now is dollar CAD back to the top side, maybe even getting some cheap dollars in around 140 to figure would be ideal. All right, so just uh, bringing you back to, uh, actually, let me just take you across to the main page here. I just want to give you another look at that uh, risk on risk off profile. Uh, at the moment, we've got, um, <clears throat> so the US dollar just trading sideways here, as is dollar one. Um, so what we've got is a situation where we're waiting, we're waiting for something to give, okay? US equities down 1.84%. Okay, you're going to see a little bit of uh, like a risk-off situation, but it's losing traction, right? Coming over to the risk-on, risk-off profile page, okay, we're looking at, uh, okay, equities up here, uh, expecting these pairs to slide, but they're only sliding a margin. It looks like everything's lost momentum with the whole coronavirus situation. So just be quite careful there. Um, you'd expect the Asian or Japanese equities to and, the, and Chinese equities to be um, a little bit weaker following the Dow, barring any new updates out of China, and then that will flow under the um, European equities. So that's where we are as far as the risk on risk off profile. If I come up here and recalculate the, uh, the chart here, equity markets at the top, currencies down the side here, you can start to work out where the, where the action is. If anything, it's come back to gold seems to be the one that um, uh, was correlating quite nicely. The, um, 
and nothing else too much. Well, Euro Yen against the 10-year bonds. That's something to probably keep an eye on if you've got access to that live data. Now, what have we got here with the, um, the daily trade routine? Well, no surprise. There's no changes here. I think we've got okay to good trading conditions. The two pairs that stand out to me are still uh, with clear direction, dollar yen and, and oil. And the rest of the pairs, well, they're just jamming away, waiting for the clear direction. Now, where's that clear direction going to come from? Well, to me, it's the fundamentals, right? So if I just switch over here to uh, March, coming into the 1st of uh, April in Asia, and that'll be rolled out, obviously, across the board. We've got the RBA minutes today. We've got some Chinese manufacturing numbers. You'd expect these to be negative for, uh, for the Aussie and Kiwi, okay? Then you come back down here, having a look at the, um, uh, well, a bit of a precursor coming up uh, to non-farm payrolls on Friday, European Eurozone unemployment. It's going to be interesting to see how that number uh, holds up um, coming into uh, Friday's trading. Then you've got the ADP non-farm employment change. This is a different bit of data on the, than the non-farms themselves. It's never really been proven that it's got a high correlation, but I tell you what, in these current market conditions, the market will look at these extremely closely, right? So make sure you're paying attention today to the two unemployment figures that are coming out, Eurozone and the uh, US ADP non-farms. Now, obviously, Euro and the US dollar, the Euro is going to be in play big time, okay? Especially, uh, obviously, during the European North American session. So make sure you pay close attention to that. Uh, as I said, I expect dollar weakness as we come through to um, Friday's non-farm employment change. We've got two days, 13 hours, right? So you've got plenty of time for the market to whip about uh, on these earlier numbers. So make sure you're paying attention uh, during the, um, well, the Asian session. Keep an eye on the Aussie Kiwi, obviously, particularly the Aussie. We've got the RBA minutes, which will be negative, And you've also got the uh, Caxton manufacturing numbers. And then that uh, European data and North American data coming out. So that's where the action is for me. I'll be watching very closely during those sessions. All right. Okay, guys, have a good trade day. Cheerio.